Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dev Diary, where, yep, Game Maker is still broken at the time I'm recording this, so we're continuing to work on our jigsaw puzzle game with a twist, which we worked on the basics for last time. Though not everything went smoothly, we managed to get majority of the experience done, with the end results being the only thing that was left unfinished. That which I managed to fix between videos. The quick and dirty version is I had each piece record its reference number to the grid cell it's placed in. Then when the check is made, the grid's X and Y positions are converted into a single number. That number is then compared to the number stored in the cell. If the entire grid is filled and all values match up, then the game is won. So now that we've tied up the loose ends from last episode, we can now move on to phase two of this project, the twist. For this, we'd need an enemy unit. This enemy unit would spend its time randomly bouncing around the puzzle grid, obscuring the player's view, and eventually posing a danger. A tick function was then created, and an enemy spawn timer was added, spawning these red balls of chaos every second. They're not perfect, and sometimes they even get stuck, but they would do. Game over features were then added for both win and loss cases. A red background for failure and a blue for winning. Nothing fancy. Then to test those additions, a collision check was added to the cursor object. Colliding with an enemy while holding a puzzle piece would result in a game over, which turned out to work just fine with both game over cases showing up exactly as they were coded. Again, blue for wins, red for losses. So to expand on the concept would require a couple new sprites and variables. The player was given health and a hurt system similar to those that we've used in the past. Then, instead of an immediate game over, the player would simply lose a point of health any time the previous collision event would occur. And after drawing all that new data to the screen, our player was now able to have three chances before it was game over. So, back in the code, a magic system was added that uses a similar setup to the health. I wasn't sure how to handle magic yet, so for now it would simply work on a basic cooldown system with toggles instead of triggers. The first in presumably multiple magic types would be a deflector type effect. A collision circle is spawned and each enemy caught in said circle would be pushed away. The original idea was to only include enemies present in the initial creation of the circle, but GameMaker kept giving me an error telling me a list did not exist in a check for a list that may not exist. So the list was simply created and deleted every frame. Anyway, the circle was drawn to the screen for clarity's sake and then magic cost was added as another array. A magic cost check was then added to the click event to trigger the use of magic. And that data was also drawn to the screen. I even spent extra time here, making the whole thing dynamic so nothing would overlap. Anyway, with the magic now in a less abusable state, even more sprites were needed. Power-ups and consumables were next and are pretty basic. If the cursor comes in contact with any power-up, it is immediately applied to the player's stats, regardless of the value of said stats. And while I technically got the events mixed up in the Switch cases, the concept still stands. There are two types of pickups, smaller pickups replenish HP or magic, and the larger pickups increase the max amount of HP or magic. Now, truth be told, this is where I stopped. There were plans to add another magic spell that would actually hurt slash destroy enemies, but here's the thing. At the time that I'm recording this, GameMaker is still broken for me, and I did not anticipate continuing to work on this further. But as always, the show must go on, and so because of that, it's not clear what the future of this project will be. I mean, on one hand, I enjoy working on something absurd like adding action elements to a jigsaw puzzle type game. On the other hand, I'm adding action elements to a jigsaw puzzle type game. So for now, this brings us to the end of today's dev diary. Remember, if you enjoyed today's entry, consider leaving a like and be sure to also subscribe and hit that bell if you haven't already. And let me know if you expected this twist from the project and if you would like to see the development of it continue. Honestly, really, just leave any thoughts and opinions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.